Welcome to Chillin' and Grillin' with Jeff. Our brown box specials have been going great. We started off with the challenge between best friends. From there, we had a challenge between the barbecue pit master and the family cook. Our last episode was a husband versus wife. Who was the better barbecue cook? This week, we're going neighbor versus neighbor. Mike versus Marco. Let's head over to the boxes and see what the ingredients are. All right, you guys, that's enough of the uh, standoff. Let's get to the competition. So as you know, it's a brown box challenge. You don't know what's in the boxes. The rules are, when I say go, you'll open the box, pull out the ingredients. You can add whatever ingredients you want from your pantry or from the house, but you have to use everything in the box. You have to make one appetizer and one main course, again, using all the ingredients in the box. We're gonna judge you when you're done out of 20 points. I'm gonna give you five points for use of ingredients, five points for your barbecue skills, five points for plate presentation, and of course, five points for taste. So let's open the box and see what we got. Inside this one, we decided to shake it up a little bit. We've got a bag of corn flakes, some stewing beef, sour cream. This is a pork sirloin roast. We've got one orange, two cobs of corn, just because it's the season, and a couple of poblano peppers. Okay, you got a bunch of ingredients. I see we got our barbecues. We got to light the barbecues. Marco, what's your trick for lighting your barbecue? Uh, I've got a couple of fire starters in there. So you're actually going to use a torch, Mike? Well, I hold just on, use Marco. a torch. Yeah. Mike, don't you use a torch? I use a torch. This is what I use. So how long does it take to light yours? A uh, matter of seconds. And it's yeah. actually lit. Oh, it's lit. You're good to go. That, you know what, uh, it, that'll probably hit about 250 in about yeah. five minutes. Or Marco, you're going the more traditional method, less with the... Uh, we call this the torch. sane method. The more of the sane method here. <laughs> How long will it take your uh, barbecues to get up to temperature? Uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes, as opposed to Mike's eight and a half seconds? This is going to be the main course, but I'm probably just going to prep it okay. and then move on to what I have planned for All the right, let's see. Let's, let's see your knife skills here. All right. You're, you're cutting into that like you have a plan. Well, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to butterfly it a little bit, smash it out. Marco, you're getting started over here. Oh, I'm almost Mike's, done. Mike's well on his way. You got a lot of smoke happening. I, saw, I heard a lot of French uh, cooking terms over there, like <laughs> smash. Smash, burn, <laughs> construction torch. <laughs> Mike's, Mike's, Mike's going with the more delicate method. Yeah, torch. I'm gonna start with the appetizer. I mean, we're just gonna do a stuffed poblano pepper. So we're gonna we're gonna compare your knife skills with uh, you are? Mike's, with Mike's. Yeah, he's using a machete. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not shocked. And you you brought some you have some interesting ingredients. I'm just looking around on your table. You got black beans. You got a can of Coke. Is that the drink or is that that's to, uh... that's my refreshment oh, okay. for the afternoon? <laughs> maybe we're gonna, maybe we're gonna cook with it. We're gonna do kind of a Mexican. Mexican, South American kind of theme today, I think. Is that the French press he's doing over there? Or? Mike, do you need a brick or a sledgehammer? No. Oh. I'm only asking for oh, Marco. Marco. He, he doesn't think you know what you're doing over here. That's all right. I he, know that he doesn't know, you know what, what he's doing over there. Mike, you got your batch of spices. So what I got here, some jalapeno cheddar. Okay. So, you know, pork traditionally is pretty pretty bland in that. And it does tend to get dry. You know what? So I, I figured I'd just kind of spice it up a bit. And you mentioned you're going to use the uh, construction torch for cooking this. Do you find that that dries out the meat when you cook a construction torch, or you find it helps retain the moisture? By the time that I think using the construction torch is a good idea, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. What's all the noise over here? That's a grinder. So starting with the stewing beef, but you're going to grind it up even smaller. This is this is going in your Mexican mix. This is going in the stuff of water. All yeah. right. All right, Mike, we're grinding up some meat over here. We're pounding mm -hmm. meat over here. Mm -hmm. Now you're rolling it up. Is there going to be bacon involved in this somehow? Oh, I'm going to have to hold this beast together. Any particular kind of bacon there, Mike? A thick cut? Oh, uh, the... What do you prefer? Well, the on sale bacon. And then how long do you think this is going to take at what? 350, you said? You're going to get the egg up to 350? Oh, I don't have a clue. <laughs> This is a real scientific method you got. Well, you know what? Barbecue isn't scientific. You're not going to do the bacon weave? No. It's it's weaving. It's kind of more like putting <laughs> band-aids on a kid. Do you sear this first, or are you going to slow cook it first? So I'm going to do indirect. It's going to hit pretty pretty fast. I don't think it's going to take a long time to cook. OK. And if it needs any help, I got some help. All right. <laughs> so we got a construction torch over here. You're using a, a can of pop. This is, a, this is the redneck mortar and pestle. <laughs> <laughs> Then when you're done, you can drink it. It serves two purposes. Yeah. Now, what do you do with the cornflakes? I'm going to top the uh, 
stuffed pepper with cheese and the cornflakes will give it a bit of texture. All right, good. So you, you brought some rice, oh? You, you mentioned you had, had some, some leftover, leftover rice, rice so and we're gonna mix going in the peppers the as well. All right, the you got a lot going on with the poblano peppers. Yep. Mike's got a lot going on with the pork. Stewing beef, Mike. Yeah. What's the strategy with the stewing beef? Stewing beef? Well, I'm gonna cut it down a little bit. I'm gonna try to attempt to do a, like a Mexican stew. Oh, okay. So, so I just what, wanna... Are these both part of the main course or do you have an appetizer? No, that, that, that's the appetizer. Bacon do I look like a guy that likes, you know, <laughs> this is an appetizer. <laughs> no, you know. no half stuff poblano for you, right? No, no, no. Right. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a poblano in the stew. So what I'm gonna get going is get the beef all, you know, uh, cooked up. Okay. Saute some, some garlic, some onions. Start adding some sauces. So now, do you put, are you going to put this in a cast iron uh, pan? And just I do. Put, just I do. So I, I have some oil going there. It'll be up to temp pretty soon. And there's corn, corn going in the stew? Corn, yep. So the next thing I'll be doing after when I add all the sauce and stuff is to uh, just slice off the, the kernels and the corn. And how about the corn flakes? Where, where is this going to come into play? Have you figured this part out yet? Oh, I figured it out, but I'm going to tell you later. <laughs> we got the bacon out over here. Yeah. And a, and a big chunk of messy pork. Well, we're going to wrap it in bacon and we're going to grill it. So we got two bacon. Oh, the, the tasting portion ought to be uh, interesting. Very similar main courses going on. Other than one's going to taste good and one's going to taste like Mike made it. Any thoughts about the orange and the corn? Corn is going to be a Mexican street corn with the pork chop. And the orange is going to be uh, a glaze, a sauce. What are you seasoning that up? Because I noticed you just added about four I had pounds some, of seasoning. No, <laughs> we got some <laughs> cumin, ancho um, uh, chili powder, chipotle chili powder, adobo seasoning, salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Right. So you're zesting up a little bit of lime and uh, lime juice, lime zest, sour cream. And what else did you say you're throwing in there? A little bit of garlic powder. A little bit of garlic powder. How are you going, Mike? Oh, I'm almost done. Yeah? You haven't burnt nothing yet? I don't, well, Jeff's there, in charge of the I'm not, used, I'm not used to smelling you there, cooking. I'm used of, to smelling you burning. Okay, so I wasn't going to worry about judging you guys because you're neighbors. It wasn't like when, I, when we had a husband and wife, but we've attracted some neighbors who've been on a previous episode. They've set up as a peanut gallery, so we're going to put them to work. So they're going to be our official taste tester. So as soon as we have an appetizer done, Remember, points for plate presentation. We're going to get the uh, experts to weigh in. And what we're going to do is we're going to get these on first to All soften right. them up. But I needed my thing to get up to temp. So. so while they're softening up, tell me what you got in the pan. OK, yeah, uh, we got shredded I, cheese. I think I missed ingredients. Shredded cheese. So we sauteed some garlic, onion, a little bit of the poblano pepper, uh, added a can of black beans, a can of corn, shredded cheese, a bunch of spices, the beef, and that's going to be the Lots stuffing. Going on. The stuffing. You're, just, you're just letting that sit on the uh, in the frying pan on the barbecue, let it get happy. Stuff yep. peppers and forget about them. Top them with some cheese, a little bit of the cornflake crumbs for some texture, and then that's our appy with the sauce that we made the lime creme. Well, I would have thought you guys would have had the pork cooking by now, but neither one of you have got the pork cooking. Well, I'm grilling direct. It's not right. going to take long. You guys are the experts. I'm just the uh, host. But Mike, I see a pile of stuff over there in that cast iron pan. Marco's just chopping cilantro, pretty yeah. boring. Tell yeah. me about what we got going on over here. Yeah, we got a whole bunch of goodness here. Once this is all in there, how long do you figure this is gonna take? About 45 minutes. All right, Marco, we got the orange. Somebody's finally using the orange. This, now, you already made the uh, the lime zest with the sour cream earlier. This, yeah. one, this one's gonna be different? Uh, yeah, this is gonna be for the Mexican street corn. Oh, okay. This is and gonna be what we're gonna... Will you do it as a salad or leave it on the cob? I'm gonna take it off the cob grill it, brush a sauce over it with some uh, feta cheese. So you're not going to use the other the other poblano pepper? No. Nope. No. Nope. So use of ingredients, you don't care about I'll those I'll put out Marco's points. plate and he can get the points to that. <laughs> hey, Marco, do you need another pepper to stuff? Sure. We're crumbling up some feta. Yeah. This is going to be for your Mexican street corn? That's right. You're leaving it on the cob, but you're grilling it on the cob. Yes. And this is your feta, your orange, your lime, your sour cream. Mayo. Mayo, grill the corn, toss it all together. That's right. One of my favorites. Brush this over top of it when, it when the corn's done. Too bad I'm not judging. This is literally one of my favorite summer uh, dishes. Well, that's why I did it. I thought you were judging. Oh, we were. <laughs> until your neighbors crashed the party, no, and uh, right. now we're going to let them. Yeah, Marco, our very first chilling and grilling episode with uh, Cheryl Miller. She did Mexican uh, street corn salad. Oh, nice. It, it was awesome. Her kids went, went to, her grandkids, I think, went, went to town on it. Loved it. All right, now, finally, we're going after the cornflakes. Yeah, I think I'm going to do a deep-fried ice cream. 
Deep fried ice cream. Will that Deep be the main course? Or no, that'll, be a, that'll be a dessert. That'll be a dessert? That'll be the sway the judges and feed the crew. <laughs> and is that where the orange is going to come into play? Uh, yeah. So what I might do is uh, an orange drizzle. So I'll mix it with some sugar, so maybe some icing sugar, whip it up with a little bit of butter, mix it up. Heat it just a, a tad and then uh, drizzle it over the deep fried ice cream. So you're going with all three then. Appetizer, main course, and dessert. Marco, did you hear that? What's that? Mike's sucking up to the judges over here. He's making uh, that dessert. Doesn't, that doesn't surprise me. It's going to have to cleanse the palate from what he's serving you for the dinner. So. <laughs> Finally, we're getting to the point where we're going to stuff these peppers. And right. I, I love stuffed peppers, but I have to admit, I don't put nearly that quantity of ingredients and spices out there, so I'm anxious to try these. Good. They look great. The Hopefully they look as good, or taste as good as they look. The poblanos already have a smokiness to them. That's what, that's what I like about them. And then you had them on there for a good half hour anyway, with a yep. fair amount of smoke. Just to so, soften them up a yeah. bit. And if I remember correctly, you were going to put the cornflakes on top. Yeah, we're going to do cornflakes. I just need to grab the cheese. I'm switching over from stuffed poblanos to... It's a deep fried ice cream. Deep so, fried ice cream. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some eggs. Yeah. And then I got the, uh, the cornflakes and I'm just going to work fast and get these the ice cream coated and put it back in the freezer probably till about we're, till we're right ready to serve. Okay. So the whole idea is uh, we're just going to dunk and, dunk and coat back in the freezer for probably an hour, an hour or so and then... Okay. We'll be Get ready. Into the deep fryer. Yeah, then we'll be good to go. All right, it's ready to go on. It's a little hotter than it was before. Yeah, we're up to about 475. He's got some heat going on over here. None of that 250 degree stuff. Oh, oh, wait, wait. That sounds like cooking. <laughs> I don't hear that sound. No, I don't hear that, that sound. Sounds like slow cooking. <laughs> I'm slow cooking, but guess what? I got a torch. <laughs> so uh, why don't we t why don't we check your stew real quick before so, we yeah uh, that sounds great we go let's, let's do it I think it's uh, it's smelling good I can smell it from here over <laughs> Marco's stuff let's see this all right ooh look at that so you know what it looks like a lot of chaos which it is but and, uh, well the corn adds to it you can see the poblano peppers cooking up nicely in there the sauce is thickening up you know what it's uh the cast iron pan it's a yeah. nice addition it's going to bring in a lot of flavor in there you got some smoke from the barbecue well you know what i got a lot of surface area so it allows it to thicken and evaporate a lot of the, the moisture quicker yeah. um yeah it'll cook with, a, with, a little no, quicker. Our, yeah, yeah exactly versus yeah. using uh like a dutch oven or something like that yeah. so so you're working on the plate presentation points here i see taking this up a notch you just going to drizzle that right over everything you betcha and this is the lime crema crema Hey, judges, you ready to uh, give our first appetizer a taste test? The, the number of judges is uh, is growing over here. We have three. They have forks ready to go. I'll let you serve it up. Okay, we uh, the neighbors are kind of gravitating around, and uh, they smelled the delicious mm. flavors going on over here. Yeah, we're more so, guest judges than yeah. Neighbors. Oh, well, guest, this yeah, well, I was going to say we're bringing in as guest judges. Go ahead, Marco, tell them what you have for them. Uh, we've got stuffed uh, poblano peppers, so we got ground beef, Corn, black beans, tomatoes, green chilies, a bunch of spices, uh, cheese mixed in there, topped with a uh, cornflakes, uh, crushed cornflakes, and more cheese. And then we've got a lime crema with some cilantro. Okay. See again, guys. Remember, you're gonna have to judge them when this is done. Okay, so we got our stew ready to go. It looks mm. fantastic. This is your lime yeah, it's crema just, uh, that you're gonna load up on top. That's it. In true Mike fashion, I see you're loading it up, and I see you have a metal on. Yeah. You know, tell us about the metal. So the metal was the, uh, you know, the Delaware 2020 Rib Invitational, and uh, which I placed first. So I am going to put some a lime wedge and some uh, nachos, and away we go. So we got some Mexican stew. We got some uh, lime-infused uh, sour cream and some uh, nacho chips. So this was Mike's use of the stewing beef and the sour cream. Mm -hmm and the corn, and then a whole bunch of about a thousand different spices. That's and, about it. And lots of them. Yeah. The rest of the ingredients he's saving for the main course. Dig in guys, let me know what you think. Okay. All right, we just served the judges up the second appetizer. They're discussing it right now. I noticed you pulled the pork off. You've got it resting under some foil sitting yep. right here. Yep. You got the corn cooking. Let's take a look at that. Yep. We're just going direct. And you're just looking to char this, get it cooked, yep. and this is going to be just, our Mexican uh, street corn. That's right. I'm and just rotating it This is part of your entree. This is part of my entree. Okay, yeah. you're just going to keep rolling it over the open flame. Yep. 
Mike, let's uh, check the pork you've got on. You've had it on qu quite a while. You're going with the low and slow. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it's it needs a little bit of a, a helping hand. It's, in the interest it's, of time. It's not as crispy as you want it to be? No, so normally I would probably do this at 225 or so, let it take its time, let it crisp up. Usually they come together pretty pretty quick. How are you going to speed up the crisping of the bacon? I'm glad you asked that question because <laughs> <laughs> back to the... Oh, back to the uh, yeah. lighting of So we're the... just going to take a little bit of flame and, uh, and give it a little bit of BTUs. And it's done. Definitely crisp up the bacon in a hurry. Exactly. Yep. Drove the temperature up a little more. Yeah. By the way, do not attempt this at home. This is not an authorized way to barbecue pork at home. So how close, what temperature are we gonna finish it off at? About 140? Well, we're, we're, we'll take it off at 140, let it sit for about five, 10 minutes, and uh, it'll pull it to 145, which is the recommended safe temperature. And All right, sounds but, good. Uh, yeah, we're doing it. Okay, so you pulled them off, and I noticed you using the smaller torch. You didn't get into the construction torch. What, what do you no. have to do? Just a little more color? We're doing a little bit more tame heat uh, just to get every kernel kind of charred. You're really working on the plate presentation. Absolutely. Perfect. Yep. All right, guys, here's Marco's uh, entree. Definitely working on some plate presentation. So the other things in the box that he used here was the pork roast and uh, sweet corn. And the orange. And the orange. He did use the orange in the barbecue sauce. So he has managed to use all the ingredients and uh, some of them in several, a couple of the courses. So go ahead, Marco, tell them what you did. Yep, uh, we got Mexican street corn. So grilled corn uh, mixed with a sauce of sour cream, mayo, lime, a little bit of feta cheese, and then dressed with a bit more crumbled feta cheese and cilantro. And then we, uh, we did a direct grill on the pork, wrapped it in bacon, and we have an orange kind of infused barbecue sauce. There you go, so, guys, perfect. enjoy. All right, Mike, we got that pulled off. You're, again, oh. 135, 140. The bacon's nice and crispy. Let's slice and see what we got. This one's yeah. got, this has the cheese, I forgot. This has the cheese, and it's got a little <laughs> bit of rub. I kept it simple. I didn't want to, you know, overcomplicate the thing, but. Uh, You're going to serve it up on a platter here? Yeah, so what I'm, yeah, I'll just, uh, you know, give her a slice and see what we can do here. Perfect. Mm. Oh, Nate, look at the juice. <clears throat> oh, your cheese is nice and melted. Mm -hmm. Great. Perfect. Came off ideal. Perfect. All right, let's slice that up and get that over to the judges. Okay, guys, one of the interesting things is with the ingredients, they both, uh, Mike and Marco, went with a bacon-wrapped pork of sorts. And uh, this is Mike's version of it. Mike, come on over. Mike did manage to use up all the ingredients as well. There Tell we them what you did here. All right, so I, I, I butterflied it. I added some jalapeno cheddar. I uh, added some barbecue rub. I wrapped it up to hold it together with some, uh, some bacon. I cooked it to about 140, let it come up to about 145, and... And this you had your, you had your barbecue set at fifteen thousand degrees Fahrenheit for this for a brief moment for a brief moment. Yeah. All right, yeah. serve it up. All right, guys, have fun. All right. Okay, Here, guys, I'll, uh, I'll bring guys, over some is... forks for you, and Thank away you. we go. Mike, the, ju the judges don't know what's, what the uh, secret ingredient is here today that you're going to use to bribe them. So what are you doing? You got this is our ice cream from earlier. You're going to deep fry. You know it? what? I'll be honest with it, with you. I didn't cook this for the judges. I cooked it for me. You know. Uh, that is, you should take about 15, 20 seconds. Eat fried ice cream. Now the judges have no idea. They're still debating your pork over there. Mm -hmm. We time this right. This this could be the uh, the winner for you. Yep. There you go. Deep fried ice cream. And then what we got here is a. Uh, oh, this is our, it, our orange. This is an orange drizzle. So it's basically butter, icing sugar, um, orange uh, orange juice, which I freshly squeezed and uh, a little bit of orange zest. All right, and you're just gonna pour that right yeah, over? Yeah, well, you know what, I'm, I, I don't wanna decrisp the ice cream, okay. so I'm gonna pour it around. He hadn't, the one ingredient he hasn't used so far is the orange, but he's used it here with the cornflakes. With the cornflakes, yep. So here you guys go. Who wants, uh, we got some uh, deep fried ice cream with wow. a orange drizzle uh, surround. All right, so this kind of worked out great. You guys were barbecuing away, uh, some great aromas, lots of smoke going on in the neighborhood. You attracted some of the neighbors, some real barbecue guys, so they decided to sit down and we asked them to judge. We weren't planning on doing that, but why not take advantage of it? So uh, these guys cooked up some great stuff. You're going to judge them today on those four categories, um, use of the barbecue and their barbecue skills in general, uh, use of the ingredients, how they put them all together, plate presentation, and taste. Five points each out of 20. Which neighbor wins the barbecue competition today? What do you guys have to say? 
So use of barbecue, I think they both did a great job. Um, there was a lot of activity going on on, on multiple grills. Um, uh, Mike was using uh, his his egg or his, his Kamado. He had the gas barbecue going, and he threw in a, uh, a flamethrower or a blowtorch <laughs> at one that, point. And that honestly, one. I, I haven't seen that sacrifice the gasket for a good cook. Um, Marco <laughs> used one grill, but seemed very, very in control of that grill the entire time. Was able to control his temperatures on all dishes. Um, so I think they both did an incredible job. I think that we would probably tend to give that category to Mike, very, very close, 5-4, um, just because Mike was um, using three grills or three different... Let's be honest, things. it had to do with the torch. It, the torch. The yeah, 100%. Let's be honest. 100%. He, 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 he had one point. So what did they presentation, Craig? Presentation overall, I thought was uh, very well done for both you guys. Uh, Marco's uh, Poblano stuffed pepper was pretty impressive. Yeah. And the uh, the roast at the at, for the meal was uh, was awesome. In like, the corn. And the corn. And the corn was good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like you, you very great job. Just yeah. just nice. You know how you stand up on end and dress it up and it just. So out of five points, who would you? Uh... Mike's last dish looked pretty good too, but the first one was a little uh, underwhelming, I'd say. But uh, so I would say Marco uh, five to four. Use of ingredients? Well, that, that was a tough one there because um, I think in all of the... Uh, now, I have to give a, uh, a little bit of a, a leeway to, to Mike here because he didn't have the home ice advantage. <laughs> the home uh, barbecue advantage. The home barbecue advantage here. So uh, I noticed that he was running back and forth and doing all that stuff. And, and in that, um, he neglected to use two of the ingredients in his main dish and app. This is true. So uh, for that reason only... Um, now he did redeem himself by frying up some ice cream and and, and he did use the ingredients and he <laughs> used the two ingredients there. However, because it was not part of the uh, the instruction, we'll have to go with Marco Marco on that one. How many points? We'll give Marco five and give Mike. So that more. puts Marco up by one point at this taste. I think the guys both did a great job. Right. All of the dishes. the food was pretty amazing. I'm they, not gonna lie, they really did. Yeah, the 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 Pablo or the the, the peppers. Um, you know, the stuffed peppers had some nice heat and then the lime just kind of came in and finished some stuff there. And how about that um, stew that Mike put together? Very, that very was good. Yeah, the cast the iron. Very tasty. Yeah. The cast yeah. iron was nice. That main dish that uh, Mike did um, with uh, the jalapeno cheddar and the crispy bacon, very, very good. Marco's corn was incredible. It was off the chart. And and uh, his meat dish, we 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 liked everything. There you go. Um, so I think that's a tie. That's a tie. Well, if that's a tie, that puts Marco in the lead by one point. Marco's our winner today of the Two Neighbors Brown Box Challenge. Congratulations. There you, there you go, go, guys. Well thank done. You. Well done. Well done so before we wrap up, I just want to thank Marco and Mike. You guys did great. Marco, thanks for letting us use your backyard. Anytime. It was a lot of fun. The food tasted fantastic. And thanks to the neighbors for kind of wandering in and uh, giving you your two cents worth and providing a little, some comments from the peanut gallery. That was great. Once again, the food was awesome. Marco wins by one point. Close, but he takes it home. The Not neighbor the champion. Margins, there you go. <laughs> Good job, guys. <laughs>